Okay, recording is on. Good morning and welcome everyone to BC 310 Church and Ministry Administration. Let's take a moment to pray and then we will get started. Can I request somebody to please pray and then we'll start. Anyone can pray? Dear God, thank you so much for this time. Thank you for this day, Lord, for our mind, for the religion, and the gladness. Thank you, Lord, for our time. It's always so interesting, Lord, that you are always good. Lord, let me rejoice in every circumstance, so that we may pray to and honor you, Lord, as we are learning about Christian. Um, uh, God, you know, this is love, and God, thank you so much. And I pray that our hearts will be open to you and more of you. Um, and what you have for us, God. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Sorry, Ash, I couldn't hear you uh, uh, properly. Uh, but anyway, I say amen. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So we are in our course on church and ministry administration. I just want to review uh, what we did last week and then uh, go forward into our next chapter let me just uh, share the pdf of the lecture notes okay so just to quickly review last week we were talking about uh, uh, administrative policies guidelines and standards. That means um, as an organization, you need to have your uh, policies, uh, how you're going to be doing things, uh, what are some of the guidelines or some of the standards yeah, that, that, you, that as an organization and various teams in the organization are going to follow. And it is always good to document these uh, and I shared with you uh, the link for our uh, for what we've done for APC. Uh, we write them, and then of course you have to keep them updated. Uh, and you're welcome to use those uh, guidelines. You're welcome to, you know, uh, 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 modify it and use it in your church, in your ministry, or whatever you're doing. You're welcome to do that. Um, so it's important to have all of that written. And we, we discussed, you know, why it's important and so on. And uh, uh, especially about roles, you know, what is a certain person in the ministry supposed to do? What is he expected to do? What is he or she expected to do? So if you have that written, it makes it easy for people. They know this is what I'm supposed to do, this is what is expected of me and so on. And it helps make decisions uh, and so on. And then standards for your work, you know, that... Uh, everyone was doing different parts of uh, different pieces of work. Uh, they follow certain standards, so then everything is uniform. It looks good, and so on. So that's uh, you need to have that for various areas of uh, your ministry. So that's where we come today. I want us to go into chapter six, uh, where we are now getting a little more into how the op the organization works. So we refer to this as operations. That means how does this organ, how does a Christian organization work? Uh, now, uh, this is true of any organization, right? So it's not just uh, about the Christian organization, but any organization, how the organization functions, uh, that's called the operations, right? The way it works inside the day-to-day -day things that happen. And if you want to break it down, uh, you break it down into what is referred to as systems and processes. That means a system is made up of many components, pieces, and it gives a certain output. So just a simple example, okay? This is not about the organization. This is an illustration. Suppose you think of a blender, uh, uh, a fruit blender. So you have this blending machine. Sorry. Now the blender has many parts to it, right? There is 
the blade that cuts the the fruit. There is the motor that runs that spins the blade. There is, of course, the container that will hold the fruit, the cover. Then there is, of course, the electrical side of it. Then there are the buttons that you press. So all these together, these are all different components. All these together, they make the make up the blender. So what happens to that system? If you put a cer certain input, you'll get a certain output. So in this case, if you cut the fruit and you put it into the blender, and the blender you know works, then the output is you have fruit juice. Right? So just to give an illustration of a system, and the system does, works the same way every time. Every time you put cut fruit, blend it, you're going to get fruit juice. That's it. You know, you, you put cut fruit in, you blend it, you're not going to get chapati, you're not going to get the rice. <laughs> it's going to be fruit juice. The output is always the same. So that's a well-defined system. So um, in the ministry, the way the ministry is organized, in uh, every ministry area, so example, publication, the books, youth ministry, children's ministry, pastoral ministry, member care, small groups. So you can think of each as a ministry area. And within each ministry area, there are many systems, things that have to take place. And between the systems, there is communication or transfer of information. It could be transfer of information. It could be transfer of data. It could be transfer of money, whatever. There's, there's, there's interaction between the system. So if you want the organization to work very well, you have to look at the system and process level. You know, you have to look into it. And let me give you an example. For example, uh, in our church service, our church services that in the five locations, six locations, this Bangalore and Bangalore, the six locations, we have first-time visitors. So we have uh, welcoming, you know, we welcome oh, uh, all those who are here for the first time, welcome, please stand, and, you know, we greet them, we welcome them. And then we give them a little card uh, where they can, I mean, we're not forcing them to do it, we're just saying, hey, if you, if you would like to, you can write your name and number or email address, whatever, give it back to us, then we can keep you informed about uh, things that are happening. Now, of course, so that's the first part of the system. There's one piece, which is you welcome the visitor who comes to your service. And in a, in a very nice way, uh, you are getting their information. So we give them a, a welcome bag. It has a, maybe a couple of books and a pen and things like that. So we give it to them. And then we give them this card and say, can you please write your name and number? And then we try to interact with them immediately after the service. So we welcome them to, uh, we have a welcome lounge where the first time visitors can go and they can meet some of our people and so on. So we've collected their information, but it has to go to the next step. So what has that, what happened? So this is our process of information. So we collect, so this first box, which is you collect the information. Okay, now it has to go to the next box. What is it? Well, all the cards come to the church office. So Monday, uh, uh, by Monday, the cards are delivered to the church office. Now, we have an online system also. So if somebody wants to go and electronically provide their information, they can go to a particular URL and enter it there. But most people, you know, they're sitting in the service, so uh, they're not going to take out the phone and do that. So it's easy for them to write it on the card and give it back. So it comes to the church office. In the church office, we have an admin person. Her responsibility is to put that information in a spreadsheet, right? So she puts a date, the location, the contact details. And she puts in a spreadsheet. And um, then within the first two days, so that's her job, first, her task, first task, put it in a spreadsheet. Right? which is now accessible to all the pastors. Then next step, we need to call them or email them. 
So we have designated people for the de designated locations. They will call them on Monday or Tuesday or email them. Hey, thank you for coming. Did you like the service? Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, um, would you like to come back? Would you like to attend a small group? Um, those kinds of things. You know, we're not going to force them, but we're going to give them the options. Now, sometimes some people come and visit us from out of town. Uh, they may come only one Sunday. They say, no, no, I'm actually, I live in a different city. I just came for one weekend, so I came, and things like that. So we just we, we make a note there. Okay, don't disturb them. Right? Now, from that spreadsheet, that data has to go into our, we have a system, and, I'm, and we will learn about this later on. We have a church management system. Right? So all the data goes into that software. So the same person puts in the Excel sheet, also just puts puts it into, enters it into our church management. So typically on a Sunday, we, you know, nowadays, maybe about 20, 25 visitors are there. So that information goes. So it's not much. It's, it's easy to manage. So she puts it into the church management system. And their data also goes into our email list. So we have a mail list server, right? So the place from which we send out emails and also the mobile numbers go into our WhatsApp messaging system so that we can send them WhatsApp messages. And of course, they can unsubscribe anytime. They can opt out of it anytime. So that's the next box. It's gone into um, you know, the spreadsheet, but then from there, it also has to go into a church management system. It also goes into these uh, email and WhatsApp system, right? So uh, the IT team pulls it from the spreadsheet there, the IT, and this goes into a church management. Now, when people make the calls, they uh, so that's the first call, the first week. Now we call them for three weeks, right, to just see if they're coming back. If they decide, so if they're coming back, then uh, sorry, let me say this. So when when they come the first time, their status is first time visitor in the church management system. It'll be marked as first time visitor. But you you know on the second week. Uh, after two weeks, sorry, they call them again, and they are coming to church. And they said, yeah, I love it. I'm coming back. I'm going to be attending. Okay. Then we change their status to a regular attender. That means they're regularly attending. So we, after two weeks, third week, so we make three calls. We change the status, okay, that they are regularly attending. So their status. Then from there, after three months, we invite them to a VIP banquet, and we also invite them to a membership class. So if they've been attending, so then now a VIP banquet is more for them to get to know more about the church, meet with the pastors, and then a membership class is if they want to make a commitment. Okay, we don't force them to into any of this. Now, if they do attend um, at the membership class and decide to become members, then the status changes to member. So first time visitor to regular attender to member. Now, if they were attending only once and uh, then they decide not to come back, so then we move them to uh, the status moves to general. That means they just visit, they just visited, they're not attending. So it goes to India general or overseas general. That means if they've come from overseas, we mark them as overseas. If they've come from somewhere else in India, we mark them as India general. So the whole data is there. Every person is tagged, family. So if they come as a family, it's all there. So at any time we want to pull out data, we want to address certain, like if you want to address the first time visitors, we can get that list. If you want to address those who are regular attenders, we can get that list. If you want to address those who are members of the church, we can get that list, right? So this is like our, you know, if you look at this whole ministry area, we call it the first time visitor and member care ministry area. Right? Now, from time to time, we have to make calls to keep data updated because, you know, people come and go and they may leave town and so on. So we need to get people to call up to the data. Now, in due time, our plan is to open up our system so that people can maintain their data directly. So we will open it up. But for now, we call to keep the data updated. And then also, you know, for their birthdays, Every month for birthdays, we send them a little gift. For wedding anniversaries, we send them a little gift. Uh, so that also happens because we have that data in our system, right? So that's so there are many 
pieces to it. And when it all works together, then this, you know, the first time visitors member care area is you know, really strong. It takes, takes good care of it. The other thing you can do is you can analyze, hey, if we've had, you know, 500 visitors, how many of them are people from out of town? How many of them are people who uh, have come back and, and are now regular attenders? How many of them uh, have become members? You know, because you have that data, you can then analyze it and you can have an, a, a good idea of what's happening. And based on, you know, what's going on, we can improve, you know, so just, you know, like maybe two weeks back, I had a meeting with our, some of our pastors who are responsible for this. And, you know, we saw some gaps. We saw some areas that we were not doing well. Uh, people were falling through the cracks. And so, you know, we said, hey, we need to, you know, redo this. We need to tighten this, you know, because we can't miss out on people and so on. So uh, we constantly keep improving. So that's just an example of you know, how one ministry area is made up of many systems and processes. And when you, you know, define what each system has to do and how they have to transmit information and interact, then that particular ministry area works really well. Let me pause here and see. Uh, I hope I'm making sense. Are you all with me? Uh, are you understanding what's happening? Is it all okay? Yes, yes, it is okay. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to, so that's just one example right, of how uh, a particular area of ministry, if it's very well organized, you have systems process, then that works fine. So like that, we have to think about different areas of our church or our ministry, whatever we're doing, and try to organize it very well so that people, you know, ultimately we want to serve people well, right? So, for example, uh, uh, every day when I, uh, I I can log in and I can see whose birthdays are there today, whose wedding anniversaries are there. And uh, so that's when I open my browser, it goes straight there. Then I can, you know, uh, send them a WhatsApp message. So they feel nice. So, hey, uh, pastor sent me a message <laughs> to wish me on my birthday. It's not because I can remember it. Obviously, I cannot. Uh, but it's there in the system. And I just have to, you know, log in and I can see and uh, just send them a you know, happy birthday or a happy wedding anniversary message. And then from the church, they'll get a call. Somebody will pray for them. Uh, from the church, they'll get a little gift on that day. It makes them feel very cared for, right? So you can do all these things, very simple things, uh, but it makes makes uh, uh, gives people a sense of community, uh, a sense of belonging. Uh, that we care uh, for some, for them. And also, if I want to find out somebody's phone number, I want to find out somebody's email address, I can just log in uh, and I can see it. I can just search for them. I can see and I can then, you know, call them, contact them. So it really helps to have that. Let's talk about a few, um, some things here. Now, when it comes to uh, setting up uh, the system for your ministry, what are some of the things Excuse me. What are some of the things that you need to keep in mind? So the system, you know, remember it's repetitive functional activity. So every week this keeps happening, you know, like the first time visitor and thing. Every week it's repetitive, it's going on and on. And basically you need people uh, with the kind of skills the, the, so that they can perform those. Activity. So each of these box, boxes here, they're actually people. You know, people are doing that. And so you need the right people with the right skills who can do that work. And then, of course, there's a flow of information, finances, etc. that happens. So let's take another example about money, right? Accounting. So there are two ways uh, money comes in to the church, right? One is through the offertory that's made on uh, Sundays. Now, uh, we have reduced that quite a bit because these days uh, people are more comfortable just giving online. You know, they do a bank transfer or something like that. So 
the offertory counting has come down, especially from the time the pandemic set in. It's come down quite heavily. So not much money comes through the offertory, but uh, the process, the system and the process is still there. So what happens? And this we were practicing from the very beginning, right? So um, you would pass the offering buckets and uh, and nowadays we don't pass the offering buckets. We used to. Nowadays we just keep it at the back. Uh, those who want to, will put it there. Uh, so you know there might be people who may put some cash or drop a check in the offering box on the way out. They will just drop it. So then, at the end of the service, this is a counting team. So there has to be two or more people. Usually three to four people are there. It's never one person doing the counting. And the counting has to happen right there at the venue. And we have a log book, a book where, you know, the, it's a, it follows a certain format. You have to put the date, you have to put the various denominations of the currency, how many pieces of that currency was given, uh, what's the amount, and then checks that came in, is written okay these checks this amount so then this is the total and then all the cash in the check is put in an envelope it is sealed and is signed off by two at least two of the people who did the counting the log book is also signed off by at least two of the people then the uh, the, the, the the money that's there along with all the envelopes for so some people they put their money in envelopes and they would write on the, you know, the offering envelope. They'll write so much amount, you know, whatever. So those envelopes also, along with the cash, uh, with the envelope, which has, which has been signed off and sealed and signed off, that is sent to the church office. So there's a log book at the venue that has all these details. A copy of that is sent to the church office. That same information is on the envelope. So uh, that's how it is done. And then that, when that money comes to the church office, the same thing happens in the church office. That means there's a logbook. It's counted once again. Uh, it's tallied. Yeah, okay, these are the denominations. Everything is come, it's all written. And then after that, it goes and it's being deposited into the bank. So there are three checkpoints. One is the checkpoint at the venue. Second is a checkpoint at the church office. And the third checkpoint is when it is being deposited. All these three numbers should be the same. Right? So nobody's allowed to take money out anywhere. What came in, 100% has to go into the bank account. All three numbers are matching. Right? So that's how we do. Now, on some rare occasions, when there's a problem, then uh, we we hold people responsible. Hey, why is there a mismatch? You know, some amount is missing. What happened? Now it has happened, you know, on a couple of occasions, and then we have to check and recount. And even if it's a small number, that small amount is missing, we are very careful. So in this last 22 or 21, 22 years, uh, it's probably happened maybe two or three times when the numbers were not telling, and then we had to check and call the people, what's happening, you know? And so people know that, hey, everything is being checked. No money can be taken out. We've had some, you know, like I said, one 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 instance when things went pretty bad. Um, and uh, But other than that, it was, it was good. The second way money comes in, of course, is through direct deposit. So people, this is the most, most people are doing it this way. So it comes directly to the bank account. Now, Again, every month, the bank statements. So there are three different bank accounts. The bank statements are given, are reviewed by an internal accountant. They're also reviewed by our external uh, accountant. Then every three months, there is an audit that's happening. So everything is being checked all the time. You know, so there can be no slip up because there are different people checking it. And uh, nobody can, you know, uh, mess around with the money. Now, I personally don't handle the, the bank accounts. It's being handled by our accountant. 
So she has full control. Um, she's the one who does all the payments, everything. So she has full control. Uh, but she, of course, she's a you know person we trust, and also uh, you know she's very good in her work. And then there are other checks in place to make sure that everything she does is being checked by other people. So, um, so then we have processes for everything. So if, if people want to purchase something, they have to get a quote, send a request that I want to buy something. It has to be approved and then they can purchase. So we have a limit, like anything below 10,000 rupees, it's okay, the accountant can approve and send it. Uh, if it is above, it has to be approved. Uh, usually it will come to me, I approve it, and then the purchase is made. So again, there's a process if people want, you know, for various ministry areas, they want to make purchases of different things happens. We also have a process for expense claims. If people spend money out of their pocket, they can claim that, but again, there's a process. They have to submit the bills. They have to send it in certain format to the accountant. She will review everything and she will reimburse. Of course, every, uh, every month salaries are paid, uh, vendor payments, you know, so our, our standard is uh, we want to pay all our vendors within three working days. So we don't hold any payment. And so the moment the vendor sends us a bill within three working days, usually it happens the same day, but the maximum is we, we keep them waiting for three working days and we make the payment. So we don't owe anything to any vendor, you know, beyond three days. Then every month, uh, I get a report, a financial report, that this is the money that's come in, uh, and I can see you know, all, all our income, all our expense, um, what have we spent, and then the whole uh, the, the the amounts over the last from 2016. I have an overview. Uh, I can see all the numbers month on month, and I can also see for that month, you know, what came in, what went out, and so on. So I can always talk to the account and say, hey. We are spending too much money here, cut it down, or these, those kinds of things. So I just do a quick check. So the accountant knows that they have to send the report by the 7th of every month, and I have a quick check. And then we have a budgeting process where for every area of ministry, this is the amount of money they can spend for various conferences and events. So whenever they want to conduct that event at ministry, they have to stay within that budget. So, that's, so these are all the different things that go into our accounting department. I just gave it to you in a very quick way. But there's a lot of work uh, that goes into all of this. So everybody in the, uh, all the staff, they understand that this is how it works. So we have to keep educating them. Hey, you know, don't, if you're going to spend money, get it approved, then spend, uh, uh, and so on. So everybody is in alignment. They all work like this. They know this is how it is. Uh, all the pastors, all the ministry leaders, you know, because they are all spending money for their ministries, but it all goes through a particular, through a, the accounting department, the system and the process, everybody has to follow, okay? So that's another example. Uh, let me see, any questions here? Any questions, everyone's okay? All right. So, uh, we will talk about you know some one more example, and I'll give you a little exercise for to do later today. So uh, you know, if you look at our human body, our human body also is so well organized. And I'm just giving an example. We all know. So our human body has different systems. There's the circulatory system, the, the system that you know circulates blood in our body, the digestive system, the endocrine system. The, uh, the skin, the exocrine, the immune system, the muscular system, nervous system. Uh, there is the renal urinary system, the reproductive system, the respiratory system, the skeletal system. So all these systems are make up one body. Right? So if you want to think of it, one organization, but it has all these specialized areas that are doing uh, work. But they all work together and make up the whole organization, right? So the human body is just a wonderful example of uh, uh, you know how an entire organization should work. 
when it has different systems or departments, you can say. And they're all doing a specialized function, but all works together and uh, makes, makes things happen. So what are some things, what are some objectives when you're defining a system and processes in place? What are some things we need to keep in mind? Right? Um, uh, first of all, it should make uh, the ministry area efficient. It shouldn't become a stumbling block. Right? Uh, it should be make work very efficient. You know, there are some cases when we need to make very quick decisions, and uh, you know, we don't have the luxury of taking you know two weeks or one month to make a decision. No, you have to make a decision: yes or no, go forward, not. And so, the systems that you put in place should be able to you know, work fast, work quickly. So keep it very simple so that, you know, there can be efficiency. Uh, don't make it too hard for people to do their work. Make it simple. Uh, there is accountability, but yet there is efficiency, right? Secondly, people must be very clear. This is what I have to do. This is who I need to work with in order to get something done. So, for example, uh, if a ministry or a pastor or a ministry leader wants to do a campaign, a promotion campaign for their area of ministry, in you know, example, uh, the youth ministry, they're having a they're having a youth camp. So they want to announce the youth camp is happening. People need to go and register, and this is the theme of the youth camp. These are the speakers who are coming, etc. We have a very clearly defined process. What happens? The youth pastor speaks to our events manager. So we have an events manager, somebody who manages all the events for the church. They share all the information. The events manager is responsible for getting all the venue, the logistics taken care of. So the pastor doesn't have to do that. He just has to say, hey, I want to do this youth camp November 2nd, 3rd, 4th. Uh, I would like to have it in this venue. We're expecting about 200 youth. We need to have transportation, and uh, please, you know, book the venue. Please start the registration, etc. So that's all he has to communicate to the events manager. Now the events manager has the responsibility of booking the venue, paying the advance, you know, getting all the logistics done, and then he interacts with the media team and the IT team to run the promotions. So the media team may create the graphics and uh, the video, whatever they need to promote this youth camp. The IT team will send out the emailer, the WhatsApp messages to the youth, so we can pull out you know, all the young people, you know, below whatever thirty, between eighteen to thirty-three or something like that. Pull out all the information, send them an email, send them a WhatsApp message, tell them to register. So the events manager works, and the work happens. Right, so. The, every ministry leader, youth pastor, knows to promote the event, they only have to speak to the events manager. The events manager will take care of all the other things with the graphics team, media team, IT team, get it all done. Right? So people are very clear what they have to do, whom they have to interact with, and what, what to expect. You know, what, what information they should give, what can they expect to be done. Very clear. Right? So that's it should be very simple, very clear. There should be a good flow of information, resources, finances, and that. that means you know money, movement of money. So, so the events manager will inform the accounting, hey, uh, we have booked this venue. It costs us so much. Please send the advance 50% to book the venue. Right? So the accounting team will send it. Of course, it'll come through me for an approval. I'll approve it. Then they'll send the money when it's gone. So the flow of information is very clear. And then we also constantly look at ways to improve. How can we do this better? Are we, you know, are we having some problems? Did something did not work fine? And we keep improving the the way the systems and processes are working. Right. Uh, another question that we can th think about is, you see, we mentioned earlier that every system really is it's all about people, right? It's people who are doing the work. Uh, it's uh, you know, especially in church ministry, it's not machines, it's people. Now, we do use computers and all that, but really it's people. Now, people are going to grow, and they will also like to have a change in what they're doing. Uh, sometimes they may leave 
Yeah, they may go vertically, laterally, or they may move out of the ministry to do something else. So people are not static. People are dynamic. They're growing. They're moving. So the systems we put in place should be independent of people. That, in the sense that uh, it should not depend on the person. Right, A new person can come in and everything should just go on, you know. So uh, just some thoughts here. How would we make, how can we make sure that um, the systems and processes we put in place uh, uh, don't stop when people either move up or they move horizontally, they move out? How can we ensure that these things will go on? I just want to get your thoughts on it. You can just share your thoughts. How can we make sure that things go on, even when people move? Any thoughts? Anybody? Can I say, can I talk? Please go ahead, Kennedy. I think by training others and doing mentorship. Yes. So we, we, you know, we look at the next person who's going to come in, train them in, train them before they come in, so that when one person moves to another role, everything just goes, you know, very smooth. Everything keeps working. You know? So usually in our ministry, we may reorganize, you know, like a. A youth pastor may become worship pastor, and somebody else may come in as youth pastor. Uh, there may be a reorganizing of people, a rearranging of people. And even if you rearrange, everything should just continue. And the best way to do it is when we can train them. You know, this is how you should do it. What are the ways? What are other ways by which we can do this? Good. Any other thoughts? Can I ask something? Yeah, go ahead. I think by having a seasoned reliever who can uh, come in when there's a problem or somebody's on leave or has traveled. Uh, sorry, Kennedy, I missed missed what you were saying. Having someone? A seasoned reliever. Oh, okay, a seasoned reliever, okay. So they come in for that time when that person is gone and exactly. they, they fill in that. That's also a good idea. So we can get people ready for that. Yeah. And if our, if all the people are informed about uh, the way we work, it's easy to move people, right? So everybody knows. So whether I'm in this role or this role, I, this is the way I work, you know. Uh, I mean, the roles are different, of course, but the way I interact with other departments or other areas of ministry is uniform, you know. So if you move them here, it, everything continues the same. You're doing a different role, but, you know, if you want to interact with accounting, it's the same. If you want to interact with uh, media or events, or it's all the same. So you can easily move people because you've got a standardized system and process in place that everybody can uh, just move in, in and out very quickly. Harrison, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, I want to share some experience in my church. Um, you know, there's this thing, you know, when a service is going on and they bring a piece of paper to you and say, okay, um, you're taking this or you're taking that and whatever it is that, you know, they want you to do. And when we're having a meeting, I can remember me mentioning some few things. Now, like what we are sharing, for people, you know, to be relieved or maybe moved, you know, to one position or the other, or as new members are coming in, at least there should be room, you know, for them to be trained and put into some position so that there are laborers, you know, in the house of God, you know, to take up, you know, some responsibilities. Mm. So I, I believe that, okay, when there is a standard and there's a system, it will not be difficult, you know, for you to move one person from one position to another. 
But mm. when there is no standard and there's no system, then you see things, you know, being done anyhow. So I believe that people, you know, every every Sunday or every weekday, so you see new people coming in. So how do you bring in these new people? How do you take them in? How do mm. you bring them into the system for them to start functioning? Mm. Because, you know, mm. one thing I've seen is that, okay, people come in and they go out because there's no standard and there's no system. Mm. So, but when there's a standard, there's a system. As people are coming in, there's a position for them. There's a system waiting for them to train them in one thing or the other. <clears throat> and you're able to, like, know, you know, their gifts and know where to position them. So mm. I believe that when this standard and system is put in place, it will not be difficult to position people where they're supposed to be. Mm. That's what I feel like sharing. Thank you. Nice. Very good. Good. Thanks for sharing. Very good. So um, I'll just share a quick um, few thoughts here on that. So what we have, um, uh, what we do um, is... Um, uh, we have a, a, a Get Connected page. Let me just uh, um, share that with you very quickly. So um, we, we tell people, uh, so this is our church website. So they can go and uh, they can go to the volunteer page. And we just tell them, hey, just fill this up. So anybody who wants, um, you can see my screen. Yes, yes, I can. Okay, yeah, that's yeah, okay. So we just tell them sign up. So very simple. Thank you. Put the number, name, mobile address, which location they are in, what's the age, and where would they like to sub? We give them all these options, right? So they can just check, and they submit, sign up. So it's a very simple thing. They can do it in a couple of minutes. And this goes to the event coordinator in their location. So the, if they select, you know, depending on which location they select, it goes to the event coordinator there. And that coordinator immediately contacts these people and says, hey, you signed up, you want to volunteer in this, this ministry. Uh, I'll see you next Sunday. Uh, and then uh, they take them through the guidelines for that area of ministry. Okay, this is what we this is what you should be doing you know this is the time you come these are this is how you work and so on um, they take them through the guidelines and then they just uh, you know roster them that is okay you, you, you'll be you know put up you know you can serve on these Sundays or these days this is what you come so this is how we do it it's kind of a very simple straightforward um, uh, way in which we uh, enable people to sign up to get involved in the ministry. And these are volunteers, right? So just sign up. Within one week, they are into what they want to do, of course, unless it requires training. So if people want to handle the cameras, if they want to handle the live stream or the media or the sound, uh, those things require specialized skills. Um, so, you know, they'll take, go through se several weeks of training or somebody else will be there to guide them and so on. But then eventually they will learn how to do it. Um, some areas of ministry are very simple. You know, if you're a greeter, just, just stand there, shake hands, or welcome people, things like that. So the training happens depending on the ministry and they uh, get them uh, involved, right? So that's how we do it, yeah. Now, um, what I wanted to go into now is um, for good system, for having good system design. Some of the things you think about constantly is excellence. How can we do it better? Efficiency, how can we do it faster so that it's productive? How can we do it cheaper so other ways that we can avoid spending money on things? So we can you know, save that money, use it for other things. How can we do it differently? Like it gives us an edge. Rather than doing it the old way, can we do it a different way, and a fresh way? Right? So you always think about these things over and over again. How can we do better, faster, cheaper, and differently? So these are the thought process as you're examining 
uh, what is going on and what is happening. Right? Now, very quickly, I just want to talk about, so here's an example of a system process about book requests. And the people from around India, they will contact us for books. So it can, the request can come through email, a phone call, a letter, or it can come at a church location, a book table, or they can speak directly to a staff. A request comes. There's one person who's responsible who records the request. Basically, it's a spreadsheet. Uh, you know, send these books. This is the address. This is the person, their name, and so on. Now, there's one person who's responsible for managing the book dispatch. So from the time books come from the printing press, he receives the delivery, he manages the inventory every month, he checks you know, how many books for different titles and languages we have in stock. And every week, uh, a couple of days in the week, he will check what requests have come in. Uh, you know, some people may request you know, many hundred copies, some may request just a single copy. So depending on that, he will pack it and then dispatch it and then he'll mark that request. That's completed. So this is a simple order fulfillment process we have. Uh, and this person also delivers books to uh, bookstores around the country. So that's a regular ongoing thing. You know, he will talk to the bookstores if the uh, stock in the bookstores have gone down. He'll make sure that he sends the books out to them so that people can pick up the books from the bookstores. Right? So this way, you know, we make sure that no request goes unanswered. People are able to get the books they need and so on. Now, of course, there are some people who download the books, the PDFs, and use that. So then that we don't have to worry. But these are for the printed requests. So then it so we constantly look at it and say, <laughs> sorry, how can we improve this? How can we uh, keep improving uh, uh, what's happening here? And so on. So uh, we would discuss, hey, can we do anything better? What can we do? Um, uh, we look at, can we send the books out in a cheaper way? Uh, uh, yeah, things like that. So as of now, you know, we've optimized, okay, we work with a certain uh, courier service and they get the books out. That's the best we've seen. Uh, individual books goes through the post office through an automated system, uh, things like that. So we've optimized whatever we can at this time. Uh, to make sure that we don't spend too much money on, or you know, we get the best deal in the cost for sending the books. Now, I want you to think about the. I'm just giving you both, uh, giving you an exercise, and so the next class I won't be teaching, but I want you to take a few minutes to think about it, and the next week when we get back, uh, you know, you can just share, but think about just think about these two exercises. And you can do any one or you can do both, right? If you wanted to set up a traveling ministry, let's say you're, you're going to be a traveling preacher. That means you're not a pastor, but you're going from city to city. You just go wherever the invitations will come. You may preach in churches and conferences and stadiums, wherever. I guess, but your ministry is a traveling, itinerant ministry. So for that kind of a ministry, to support that kind of a ministry, what would your organization look like? Think about it, right? Now think about something big. Okay, don't say, well, I'm the only person, so I'll just, you know, I'll do it all myself. Of course, when you start, that's how you start. You do it all yourself. But as you grow, as you become bigger, you need to have various things and various systems and things in place. Sorry. So think about that. What kind of... Uh, organization and how would you structure that what are the systems and processes would have now another exercise you can think about is suppose you were to set up a bible college in your city okay uh, so in your cities you're setting up a bible college where students are coming from every different places in your country and if you want of course you could do online and so on so students can join you from anywhere in the world okay i'll leave that choice to you but if you were going to set up a Bible college, what would be some of the systems and processes you will have to put in place for that to run very well? 
So think about all the different areas, how the workflow happens from the time, you know, somebody comes to get information about your Bible college to them making the application, them being, you know, enrolled, uh, and then how the classes happen and all those other things. So let's say you can have students who are residential, that means they come and stay in your hostel. You can have students who are day scholars, they just come out in class and go, and you can have students remote. They join you online from wherever they are. So how would you, what, what would you put in place? Okay, so the next lecture hour, uh, I'll leave you with these two exercises. You can do one of them or you can do both of them. Uh, just take some time to think through, you can sketch it out if you wish. Um, I mean, it's easy to just do some box diagrams and say, okay, these are things you want to have, have whatever you're comfortable with. And then uh, next week, we will have a little discussion on these two things. We just like to hear your thoughts, your ideas, you know, and then we will uh, kind of just review this chapter and move forward into the next. Okay. Any questions before we close this lecture? Are you all with me? Ah, it's okay. Pastor, uh, this exercise we have to do in detail or just give you the skeleton of it? Like, Oh, uh, it's just, uh, so you, uh, it's, it's just going to be a discussion. So you don't have to send, like, you don't have to give it to me. You can just write it on your notebook or you can just stick it in your mind, whatever works for you. And then next week we'll have a discussion. So, uh, you know, I'd like to hear different people share their thoughts on that. So you can just write it in your notebook. Sure. Yes, Harrison. Um, Pastor, I want to ask this question. Um, it's more like, you know, how can one, you know, manage himself, you know, in a church where there's no system, there's no standard, and things are done anyhow, and you're not seeing yourself growing the way you want to grow? And, you know, it's more like, you know, for every time, you know, you attend service, you find it too difficult or you find it challenging to just like, you know, cope with, you know, what is going on. How do one manage such a thing? Or how how do we go about, you know, such a thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a challenging question. Um, one is, and one thought is, uh, if you have a good relationship, like, you know, and if the, the, the leadership in that church, if they're open to suggestions, uh, ideas, then you could go have a, you know, a meeting with them, conversation with them, share your ideas, not from a perspective of, you know, these are all the wrong things, but you present like, these are things that we can do better. And also, this is how we can make it happen. So you're giving them uh, 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 a direction for the, you know, the, 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 the ways that the ministry of the church can improve and also a roadmap on how to make it happen. But that's only possible if, you know, uh, the leadership are open and they're welcoming ideas from people. Then you could do that in a very positive way. And it can be a great experience for everybody if they're open to the ideas. And then you put a team together and, you know, you begin to organize little by little to arrange things, and, you know, then everybody will be blessed. They will see the result of it. If the leadership is not open, it's a challenge, you know, then because these kinds of changes have to come, have to be led by the leaders. They have to say, we're going to, uh, we want this change. So perhaps, uh, just a thought that comes to my mind is you can point them to some training outside you know okay hey there's an organization that's a leadership organization that can provide training for our leaders uh, so on. you can point them like hey why don't you you know try to see if that can help our leaders uh again it, it, it you know it depends if they're receptive to it if they're not receptive then uh, we can't make progress so that's what I would think. I mean, uh, 
anybody has any ideas, you're welcome to share your thoughts. Go ahead. Uh, any ideas for Harrison? Uh, is that Louis? You want to share? Kennedy, you want to share? Good morning, sir. No, Good morning, class. I have a question. It's related to. Sorry. Just go ahead, Louis. Let's proceed, oh, Louis. Okay. Um, I, Brother Harrison, uh, from my own experiences, I try to dis, um, decipher between. Am I talking about systemic, systemic uh, advancement in the church environment, or am I talking about spiritual advancement? Uh, I think I would like to distinguish between the two. Um, I can be in a place I'm going spiritually, but we do not have systems, we have structures. So it means that if it comes to the spiritual aspect, I am growing spiritually. Mm -hmm. But if it comes to the system in terms of how it, this, the church is making um, growth or developmental uh, advancement, it means I don't find a place in that. It does mm -hmm. not negate the fact that I should leave the assembly. Mm -hmm. But if it is a way that I can function in that kind of environment, fine. If there's a way I cannot function, also fine. Um, because you don't want to have a, a confrontational um, approach with the first person. Mm -hmm. But if him as a person, as a minister, he, I am fed of the word of God, then I stay in that I stay in that regard until I can find my footing. Because most times, um, you can be in a place that you are way ahead in a systematic um, organizational approach, which means that your skill set is not yet needed for that time where the spirit of the church is. That does not mean that you're not that you're not important, but just that at that moment you might not be relevant to the growth process of that church. It can be sometimes frustrating, mm. but at the same time, also look at it from the spiritual perspective, whether this person I am under, I am fed of the word of God, I am growing spiritually, but in my, in my skill set, in what the things I can do professionally, I am not relevant yet. That does not mean that in the space of time, you will not be relevant. But at the same time, there's a balance in which we are just still growing spiritually, which is also priority for you at a certain point in time. But because of your professional prof um, progress, you are not bringing it into the organization. For you, sometimes it can be frustrating if you are the handsome kind of person that wants things to be done in certain ways, but not, they're not done. So you have to find that, that timing and balance at the same time, and, uh, just from my own experience. Mm. Very good. Good thoughts. Very good. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. Very nice. Good. Kennedy, you had a question? Yeah, thank you. Mine is concerning, uh, just giving some guidelines of how to run a compassion ministry. Because at times you get, there's a tendency that as the church tends to grow, there's normally a feeling that the, it, there's, more, there's more affection, there's more love to the newcomers, the, the new believer than the old one. So there's normally that kind of feeling that the older generation are not being considered. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting question. Uh, I'll just make a few comments. Maybe we can pick it up next week. Um, so I think one of the best ways is to have uh, what we call a small groups, you know, or life groups. Um, so when people are part of those small groups, that's where, you know, they really feel cared for. So we can have different kinds of small groups for different ages. You know, so we can have for youth, you can have for young men, you can have young ladies, or young couples, young families, and then of course, uh, of, you know, full-fledged families. So you can have these different groups, and then people become part of that life group. They meet every week, uh, uh, and they care for each other. <clears throat> they care for each other. Then uh, they feel, you know, cared for. And uh, uh, that would be the best. So part of what we try to do is that we try to get people into small groups um, so that they can feel cared for. Uh, and that's the best way, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we'll, maybe we can pick up this um, next week as well and talk uh, some more. So let's close the prayer. I uh, appreciate uh, each of you for asking questions and sharing your ideas. Uh, I think it's very really nice. So uh, next week, we will listen. Uh, we will have, discuss on these two exercises, listen to your thoughts, and then we'll go forward from there. Okay. All right, let's close in prayer, please. And uh, anyone could pray and dismiss us.
sir, do, we don't have the next class. Yeah, we don't have the next class, Rupa, but we can, um, so you can, I just want uh, everyone to work on those two exercises that were there in the PDF, the last two. And okay. then we will meet again next week to discuss those exercises and then go forward from okay. there. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah, let somebody pray and be dismissed. Go ahead. Who wants to pray? All right. Okay. Yeah, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you. We bless your name. We thank you for the word that we've had this morning. Mm -hmm. We thank you because you're revealing to us, oh God, what no man can reveal to us. We thank you for your wisdom. We thank you for your knowledge. We thank you for the understanding. We thank you that, Father, you are shaping us into what you want us to be. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for your servant whom you've used, the God, to open our eyes to the realities of heaven, that we may do works so good that are pleasing to you. We ask, Father, that the words that we've heard this morning will not just drop void, but, Father, it shall bear fruit in our heart mm -hmm. and make us, O God, a living example, O God, to what heaven represents. We ask you, O God, that you will help us, O God, to serve you better. We are asking, O God, that you will help us, O God, to do the things, O God, that are pleasing to you. We ask, O God, that you will help us, O God, not to make the mistakes, O God, that will cause us, O God, to put you to shame. Mm. And we ask, O God, that you will help us, that at the end, O God, you will call us worthy servants. Thank you, Father, for this day. As we go to our various place of work or whatever we will be doing today, I pray, Lord, that your spirit will be with us. I pray, Lord, that you will teach us more and to draw us nearer to you and to know you better. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Son, and thank you, Holy Spirit. For this, I pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, see you again next week. God bless. Have a good weekend. Enjoy eternal worship. Bye now. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, everyone.